What's going on you guys and welcome back to the A-Ray Show. Man, unfortunately the stock market has not been doing too hot over the past pretty much year. I mean, look at the year to date for this past year. We're down almost 19% or basically approaching bear market levels. And in fact, we'll talk about that later in the video. But nonetheless, it feels like we've just been going through tough weeks after weeks after months and months and it's just been so disappointing with the stock market. I mean, it feels like if you had put your money in cash or just left it in cash instead of investing in the stock market, you would have been doing a lot better. And that's crazy to think that that's the case, especially when inflation is so high, that having cash with this high inflation is better than putting your money in the stock market. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's not always bad news when it comes to the stock market being down. And we'll be talking about some of the pros about the stock market going down later on in this video. So if you guys want to see some of the pros and benefits that you can actually get out of the stock market being so bad, being down almost 19%, then stay tuned because we're going to keep this video positive. So with that being said, if you guys want to see that, stay tuned and you guys already know what comes next. Cue that intro. Before we get into this video, just a quick announcement. I appreciate you guys for all staying tuned and subscribe and watching my videos. Over the past few weeks, I've actually been kind of sick. I lost my voice and that's why I haven't been able to put out some new videos. But luckily, my voice is starting to come back, sort of. It's a little bit shaky. I don't know if you guys can tell. But anyways, it's a lot better than before, and I'm going to continue to push out content. So anyways, that's it for this announcement, and thank you guys for staying tuned and subscribe. But anyways, let's talk about what a bear market is. So for those of you guys that don't know, it basically is just a term to kind of describe where we are in the market, whether we are in an uptrend or a downtrend. And basically, by definition, a bear market is when you're in a downtrend where... Basically, the S&P 500 or some other index is down about 20% in a recent period. So if we go back to the S&P 500 over the past year, year to date, we are actually down close to 19%. So we're kind of edging very close to that bear market territory. And luckily, we had kind of a, a good day in the stock market on Friday. This video is being taken place on Saturday. So yesterday, so yesterday we were doing pretty good and we had like a nice little rally. So at one point of the day, yeah, we were actually technically in that bear market, bear market territory, but now we just kind of pulled out of it. So, I mean, we're kind of treading waters when it comes to that bear market territory. So that's where we are. We're in kind of a near territory where we're starting to get into that bear market territory and we got we get we know what goes on there market doesn't do too good it takes maybe one two three maybe even four years to get out of a bear market so hopefully we don't go there but even if we do i got some good news for you guys but before we talk about that good news let me just troll you guys a little bit more with some bad news we're also heading towards a near recession where basically this is going to be defined by the gdp going down two quarters in a row and i mean there's a lot of factors that we're not going to go into it for this video on why this recession is occurring as being compared to the previous quarters where a lot more people were buying inflation was lower and yada yada so we're not going to go too much into detail but this is kind of where we're heading just to kind of take note you can actually have a good market when a recession is happening but i mean we don't really know what's going to happen in the future i mean it looks like inflation is starting to kind of taper off a little bit it's still very very high the last reading was about 8.3 percent over the past year which is just absolutely insane but nonetheless we're starting to kind of taper off a little bit and inflation is not getting as bad as it was from year to year and month by month it's starting to get a little bit less and less so hopefully this is the turning point but i just figured i would show you guys that you know we're basically close to a recession and again Recession doesn't mean that the stock market is going to do bad. It just means that our GDP is going negative quarter by quarter. But anyways, okay, now here's for the good news. Good news number one. This is a perfect buying opportunity if you're a long-term investor. Maybe you're down a lot of your long-term investments. For example, if you chose a lot of growth companies like Square or Airbnb or... I don't know, maybe even Google, if you just started investing over the past year, you're probably down. And so are a lot of other people out there, including myself. But don't worry about it. If you think about it, here are some of the longer term horizons on the S&P 500. So in 2000, we were up about, let's just say, I don't know, about 1,400, 1,500 points. And then by 20, 2003, we were down 908. But where did it go from there? It only went up. And this is a reoccurring theme. Same thing. We were up about 1,500 and then we went down to almost 800 2009 but from there we went up same thing that happened during the pandemic 
of course this is a different circumstance but at the same time the same thing happens stock market goes down perfect buying opportunity stock market goes up and then in the long term you would be up if you at this point had sold taking this loss and never bought back up until the stock market decided to do well then you're still at a loss because it went back down but if you had kept your long-term investments bought more maybe average down to like over here then at the end of the day even with the stock market doing as bad as it has this in the past year you'd still be up and that's the whole point of long-term investing in dollar cost averaging if you're just buying in every single week you'll be perfectly fine the stock market is designed for these opportunities it's designed to do well over the long term for a lot of people one year feels like a long term but that's just in my opinion being impatient the stock market is not going to make you like it did last year 20 percent in one year it's not going to make you 30 percent. it's not going to make you 10 percent even guaranteed but maybe over years it's going to double your money 10 years 20 years that's when you're going to start to see that effect of course no guarantees but at the same time we've seen it over the past history the course of history so if you're looking for this perfect buying opportunity then this is what's going on i mean again year to date 20 percent down this is what we love to see as long-term investors especially if you're a dividend investor like myself man you're getting more quantity of shares for cheaper and cheaper so that's that's exactly what I like to see if somebody told you and gave you apple stock it gave you a choice of apple stock would you like to buy it at 150 and it's going to go to 200 in one year or would you like to buy it 100 and buy two shares instead of that one share at 150 and it still goes to 200 of course you take the 100 shares so it's the same thing you're getting more bang for your buck i just like to call it that i don't know why but you're just getting a better deal for the dollar that you have especially with inflation you know where the dollar is starting to get less and less of course you want to own more and more stock when it comes to that all right so let's talk about another scenario where the the market going down is actually good in this situation so let's take a look at arc and just for context i do respect kathy woods she did say that we weren't in a market bubble but i mean it looks like we were no offense to her i mean i still respect her but it is what it is i mean we were at 156 dollars now we have 42 dollars in her fund yes her fund has to do with more innovative companies that don't have that much profit margin as some of the larger companies it's more riskier and that's probably why it's been selling off so much but at the end of the day it is what it is and that's just where we are in this state of the economy and state of the stock market but anyways the point is the more that we sell off the farther away we are from a bubble yes we can sell off even more but we're not going to see this huge loss so i guess in certain ways you got to look at the 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 good and the bad and hopefully this is one scenario where you can see that okay yeah i'm not going to be afraid to invest into a company where it's sold off 50 percent in the past year um if it's a quality company that is so that's just one scenario yeah i mean it's not the best situation it's not the best positive but it's just one to kind of think of and i mean i told you guys i try to keep this video positive because for a lot of you guys out there this is tough and it feels like you don't want to ever invest in the stock market ever again especially if you started in 2021 but i mean yeah it is what it is it's it's just one situation where you got to be mentally tough you got to be able to see the bright side the light at the end of the tunnel when it comes to investing in the stock market and that's why i'm making this video for some of you guys that are out there losing motivation and in fact this video is for myself because it's painful to look at my growth portfolio and even my dividend portfolio that started in 2020 starting to lose steam. I mean, I've been at that 10,000 level for so long that I haven't been able to break. I've broken it for a few times, but I was never able to stay above it for so long. So that's painful to me because this is a huge milestone in my dividend portfolio. As you guys can see right here, I'm starting to go negative and that really hurts because this is a portfolio that was up basically 50 percent and i was actually in fact going to make a video on my dividend portfolio being up 50 percent last year but we all know how that works and I've, I've talked about this a lot so i'm not going to reiterate it in this video buying quantity of shares and buying it at a lower dividend yield or sorry a higher dividend yield is so much better when the the price goes up but yeah i mean that's it that's you know what that's going to be it for this video hopefully i was able to you know shed a little bit of positive light for you guys that are struggling to stay invested in the stock market yeah maybe right now if you guys want to set it out and then wait for a dip that's that's an that's an opportunity that's up to you guys personally i'm just going to keep buying building my portfolio 
building my positions to become stronger stronger more quantity of shares and then eventually when the stock market flips we come out of the recession we come out of this bear market inflation's low and we're starting to get back up then hopefully by then things will be good the market will go up and then we'll all be happy so that's going to be it for this video hopefully let me know in the comments down below if i was able to motivate you guys a little bit more or at least show a little bit of positive light but anyways that's it peace out guys remember it but eats and i'm back so here's a look at my growth portfolio i like to call it the area etf and i started this etf on february i think it was 18th of 2021 so essentially i have the world's worst timing as many of you guys know that are subscribers man I just take L's all the time. I invest right as the market is going to start to crash. But I mean, it is what it is. And I'm really not too upset about it because I have this power of dollar cost averaging. Yes, I mean, I'm down almost $2,500 and it's painful to look at. But at the same time, I really don't mind. For example, I mean, we're looking at Disney stock. Let's look at my average here. Disney stock, my average is $149. I mean, at the beginning when I was first buying it, it was at $180. Now I've been able to decrease my position, my average share price, actually increase my position, but decrease my average share price to $150. Now I'm getting more and more shares for every dollar. Now I'm able to buy Disney around $102. So if I were to buy one share right here, I would only have to pay $102. As compared to before, I was paying $180 per share. I could have used that $80 to buy it 80% of another share. So that's why this concept of dollar cost averaging and buying when the market is going down into quality companies is such a good thing. And yeah, I mean, yes, it looks painful in the short term, but in years and years from now, I mean, we'll look completely fine. I own some quality companies, so I'm not too worried about it. Arc W, that was one of my biggest L's. We're just not going to talk about that in this video because it was an L and it happens sometimes. At this point, I might as well just sell off this investment, take some... Uh, tax loss harvesting and put it into some of the more quality companies I have So with that being said, this is just kind of an example I know you guys can look at it and be like yo He doesn't know what he's talking about but I promise you from now five years ten years This number right here is gonna be in the positive and buy it a lot The market can switch just like that and as soon as it does you're gonna be feeling great about your portfolio And that's just how it is with the stock market You got to be strong when the market goes down in your in terms of your your feelings your passion and about your strategy and then when the market feel goes up you just gotta feel good about it and then just keep continue to push and invest every single week if your dollar cost averaging so anyways that's one of the greatest good points about the market being down let's talk about another now looking at some of these other growth stocks let's take a look at tesla so i mean there are points where tesla was trading well above a thousand dollars and if you were buying here it almost feels so painful for it to be at 663 dollars but if you're buying on these dips where it's at $663 and you know one day it's going to start to come back to these $1,000 levels, and that's a huge, huge, huge deal. And you really don't have to worry about buying in. Yeah, maybe it could drop more, but if it drops more, just buy more. It's as simple as that. And you really don't have to worry about the consequences because you know at the end of the day, yes, the recession might come, but the market might do well. The recession is going to go away in maybe one two three years four years max but the stock market and all these companies won't go away as long as you're choosing quality companies that are going to do well that have profit margins that are not losing money uh losing value and money to inflation to debt and so on you'll be fine in the long term and that's exactly my strategy it feels like i'm throwing my money away i'm just throwing it in the trash can I mean, for example, my growth portfolio, and I'll show you guys in a second, it feels exactly like I'm just losing money because all I'm doing is putting money in and the market just keeps going down. And in fact, my growth portfolio looks hideous, but I'm actually not too worried at all. I don't look at the value of my portfolio. I look at the quantity of shares in my portfolio. And that's the whole deal when it comes to long-term investing. Yes, it might hurt in the short term, but you got to think about it in the long term. It's all about delayed gratitude.